Hello, everyone. We will get started in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome to the Build End-to-End -end IoT Solutions uh, five-part workshop series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about devices and device communication. Uh, so my name is Pamela Cortez. I'm on the Azure IoT team specializing on devices and uh, training and also taking all of the wonderful feedback directly from all of you and uh, giving that to my peers to help us continuing to make our products better. As I mentioned, this is a five part series. Uh, we've already done the transform your business with IoT. If you couldn't make that one, perfectly fine. All of the videos are on demand, uh, so you are able to go ahead and register for it and then get access to that video. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on the devices and device communication. Um, in this session, what we're going to do is uh, talk about IoT Hub uh, and uh, device to cloud communication and cloud to device uh, communication. And so we'll also talk about, you know, preparing your development environment that you're going to be using to build your IoT solution. Uh, even though we're going to use C Sharp today, uh, everything that you're going to learn will be useful for if you are using a Node developer or a C developer or Java developer. Don't worry, everything you'll, you'll learn, the different toolings and development environments that would be helpful for you when building an IoT solution. Uh, and then next week, we're actually going to have device provisioning at scale. What this is, is we're going to deep dive in device provisioning service. Uh, this is a service that uh, is uh, with IoT Hub, um, and it's all about being able to register and configure uh, and do zero touch provisioning at scale. So we'll deep dive into that. Uh, we'll talk about how to enroll your devices, how to securely connect those devices, and we'll do both individual and group enrollment. Uh, so that would be a great one, especially if you're looking into uh, deploying a lot of devices and want an easy way to do that. Uh, and then the week after, we're going to be doing messaging, processing, analytics, and business integration. So this one's going to be a jam-packed one. We're going to be talking about working with Azure Stream Analytics. Uh, we're going to be working with Time Series Insights. So if you need to work with Time Series uh, data, we're going to deep dive into that. And then we're also going to go into the Event Hub integration with IoT Hub. And I'll touch on it today, but uh, that one's the one if you want to know all things data and uh, what you what are some best what is the best services and products to use for your particular solution recommend going to that particular workshop series and then the last one that we're going to do is how to work with iot edge uh, so with iot edge uh, we're going to deep dive into what is the iot edge runtime when do you use iot edge how do you deploy ai models at the edge um, and what are some of the benefits of actually using 
IoT Edge in general. Uh, and so looking forward to that one. Uh, with all of these lectures, what we'll do is have an overview, kind of deep dive into the features, and then we'll go ahead and do a hands-on lab. And as you are joining us live, we do have folks uh, who are there to help answer questions and I'll have some time at the end for more Q&A. Uh, and so feel free to ask questions during the chat. We're super excited to, to answer those questions for you. Uh, so go ahead and, and, and do that. We have a great, great crew and I look forward to, you know, doing any follow up questions at the end. All right, so agenda for today. We're going to go over the IoT Hub features. We're going to deep dive into what are some developer tools that you can use. Um, and then we're going to go into a hands on lab. Uh, so connecting a simulated device. So we're going to look at all of our dependencies and uh, set up our development environment, um, install the right VS code extensions to make it easy for you to actually uh, develop IoT solutions faster. Uh, then we're going to just create a simulated device. Um, again, it's going to be written in C sharp, but what you learn, I'm going to make sure and be conscious that there's uh, developers who uh, might not be uh, building with C sharp. We're going to show how to connect that telemetry to IoT Hub, uh, and then we're going to verify that it actually was IoT Hub, uh, the telemetry actually got up there. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to cover is some more developer resources and then how you can actually get started because all of these workshops after the event, um, you have full access to the hands on lab that I'm going through today um, and then I'm going to showcase more hands on labs for you to deep dive even further in when it comes to IoT Hub. All right, so I'm going to quickly go over that digital transformation slide. I we, we covered this in the last workshop, but I just want to cover how many devices are actually going to be connected. So the demand for IoT solutions across multiple industries continue to grow rapidly. So it, and due to that, we are seeing a huge increase of the amount of connected devices. Uh, this number to me is kind of surreal, but it's 1 million devices are coming online every hour. Uh, so these are devices that, you know, uh, are your personal phones or connected devices at your house or it's on a manufacturing floor or a smart stadium that has tons of sensors. Um, in the stadium, so it's it's definitely a lot of devices out there, uh, and these devices can range from small constrained devices, for example, your Fitbits um, or other small wearable devices, and they can also range from powerful devices that can run intelligence on the edge um, to process data before it's being sent out to the cloud. Uh, and a lot of these devices are sitting different types of data and message, message sizes. And so keeping that in mind, we wanted to make sure that our products can support all of these different types of devices that cross different types of industries. We also have uh, this, this thing that we always kind of talk about, which is that digital feedback loop. Um, and really what that is, is kind of three parts of it. One, we're capturing the digital signals across the business. And what that really means is that we're taking all of this data across you know, operations, you know, telemetry data coming from products, connected products, employee input, customer signal, um, and then we're driving insights from that collected data and making sense out of it. And once we make sense and understand those insights, we actually can, the third step, actually have action, be able to improve the business outcomes of the solution that we're trying to drive. And so this is, you'll probably, maybe I'll probably have this slide for every single workshop, but it's a really important concept that IoT is, is one data type that's actually 
going into your full business solution and your driving insights to drive uh, a lot of action, valuable action. All right. So you can see that there's many different use cases across different industries that requires connecting devices to, uh, to connect um, and collect valuable data. Uh, and so what we're going to talk about today is how do you actually, co uh, actually connect these devices to the cloud? And so that's where we're going to talk about Azure IoT Hub. Azure IoT Hub is really our cloud gateway, and it's a way to securely connect those devices across those different industries and connect all those different sensors that are used in different IoT solutions. So let's go ahead and deep dive into IoT Hub in general. Um, so we do recommend connecting devices through IoT Hub, and the reason for that is because IoT Hub is really meant for IoT devices. Every feature that we build out with Azure IoT Hub is meant with IoT uh, devices in mind. Uh, so that includes uh, bi-directional communication uh, and being able to support multiple languages and open source SDKs uh, for devices as well. Uh, and I wanted to mention that our SDK, especially our device SDKs, they support multiple uh, languages. So C, .NET, C Sharp, so, uh, Node, Java, Python. You can really connect your devices through those device SDKs. Uh, and you don't have to use the device SDKs. Uh, the device SDKs uh, are really great if you want a, a quick way of being able to get started, um, being able to capture and send and receive um, uh, data to IoT Hub and to the cloud. Uh, these SDKs enable you to build apps that you run on your IoT devices using a device client or a module client. Um, and they're really meant for to send that telemetry uh, to your IoT Hub and get you started quickly. Um, so if you're not using the SDKs, what you can do is you can connect directly to IoT Hub using IoT Hub REST APIs. So that is an option for you if you want to do that as well. Uh, and so you, there's multiple ways of being able to connect to IoT Hub. We also have support for multiple protocols. I'm going to I'm going to deep dive into that a little bit later on the different protocols and why you would choose one protocol for another protocol. Uh, but there's a reason why we support multiple protocols. Uh, so we support HTTP, uh, AMQP. Uh, MQTT, uh, and so we'll deep dive into that a little bit later. And then, of course, IoT Hub supports sending telemetry up. Uh, you can receive commands. Uh, it's great for device management, uh, device twins, which we'll, we'll go into to that in a moment. And you're also able to do queries and jobs. And I'll, I kind of want to just give that overview again with IoT Hub. It is a cloud hosted solution back in to virtually connect any, any device. Uh, and with that said, you can send billions of messages. You can scale up and scale down. Uh, you can send declarative message routes. Uh, you can also do file upload. Uh, file upload is really great for uh, media files and larger files. And we'll talk about that in, in a little bit later as well. Um, and also, you can do, uh, use Azure Monitor, Azure Resource Health, and then configuration management. Uh, and then it offers end-to-end -end security. Uh, any of our features in Azure IoT has some sort of security feature, uh, and IoT Hub is no different. Uh, so when you think of end-to-end -end security with IoT Hub, it's really about uh, setting up individual identities, credentials for each one of your connected devices, um, and that's really going to help you retain the uh, confidential of both the cloud to device and device to cloud messages. And this is really important for a device lifecycle, uh, being able to have that, that secure way of being able to do both uh, 
D2C and D2, uh, D2C messages. Uh, so for example, if you need to do firmware or software updates, you're able to do that securely. If you need to retire your device um, or you know, revoke access, maybe your device got hacked or anything like that, uh, part of your device lifecycle, you can easily uh, be able to revoke access rights to specific devices as needed. Um, and IoT Hub supports TSL, uh, security and X509 certs. Um, and on top of all of this, uh, we do have IoT Hub uh, support with Azure Security Center. So if you're aware of Azure Security Center, maybe use it for other products um, with Azure. Uh, IoT Hub is now a part of the Security Center. So this means that you can securely connect your device and your entire IoT solution um, to Azure Cloud, uh, which is great. I'm a big fan of Azure Security Center and being able to see the recommendations um, and being able to see what are some next steps that you can take to make sure your solution is even more secure. All right. So there's different SKUs and different pricing for IoT Hub. And uh, as developers, I always like to talk about these tiers because they're really important to note. Um, if you're if the basic tier, the basic tier really what the difference is between that and standard tier is that basic tier is telemetry only. So it's device to cloud telemetry, while you have the standard tier that has device to cloud and cloud to device uh, uh, messaging. And this is really important to note um, that you can go from basic tier really easily to standard tier. So let's say your business started off where you only needed telemetry only to the cloud and that's it. You just wanted to read the telemetry. You didn't care about over the air updates on your, your uh, device. Uh, you know, there's a lot of business reasons why maybe you just want to send telemetry up. If down the road you want to be able to uh, have that ability to then do cloud to device messaging, you can easily do that. Um, so I always recommend people, uh, you know, looking into going to basic tier or standard tier based on their solution. But keep in mind, there is an easy way to go from uh, basic to standard. Uh, and I also want to point out that we do have a free tier. So the free tier, it has all of the features of standard tier, uh, and so you can really get started. Um, the difference is the, the number of messages you can send a day, uh, and then how many IoT units you can use a month. And uh, I just wanna quickly go to that pricing page because there is a great overview on what all the features are supported versus basic and standard. So we talked about the device to cloud telemetry, how both can have that, but there's some features like that cloud to device messaging that I just mentioned, but also device streams. And we'll, we'll go into de de device streams shortly. Um, but if you're also working with IoT Edge runtime, you can only do that in uh, standard and free tier. And if you wanted to look into device management, device twin or module twin, uh, again, that goes to standard. And then if you're looking into device provisioning service, uh, that one goes with standard as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind uh, when you're building uh, and what all is supported. Uh, you can see at least with basic, you get the core features needed. All right, so I'm gonna go back. And with that said, I just wanted to, to talk about IoT Hub and Event Hub comparison. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because this is a question I get a lot is, you know, what if what if uh, what if we kind of just wanted to build our own thing and, and go with a event hub? Uh, and what is the difference between IoT Hub and Event Hub? Because at the end of the day, you can adjust its data. It is a big amount of data that's that's going up. So really the the gist of it is that azure iot hub is 
you know, really focus on big data streaming service in Azure um, and it's designed for that high throughput data uh, streaming scenario where customers can send billions of requests per day. Uh, and it's really designed to support your big data apps and solution. Uh, and additionally, IoT Up actually uses Event Hub for its telemetry flow path. Uh, so your IoT solution is actually benefiting from the, you know, the, the great power of Event Hub. Um, but the reason why you want to look into using IoT Hub and not going directly with Event Hub is because IoT Hub um, is it's meant for actual IoT devices. So it provides those rich IoT specific capabilities, uh, like for example, uh, pre per device identity. Event Hub, you don't have that. Um, it also provides file update from devices, device provisioning service, um, and also cloud back to device messaging, um, and a load of other features as well. And you can see that Event Hub, even though it's super powerful for a lot of big data applications, uh, when it comes to IoT devices, really IoT Hub is the way to go. Um, and one of the questions I, I hear a lot on is, but what if you're just sitting telemetry up? You know, what, what would you recommend? And you don't care about cloud to device messaging. Um, well, we still recommend that you start off with uh, IoT Hub to support your data ingestion scenarios uh, to make sure that you have that, you know, instant access to full features of the IoT capabilities. Again, going back to that per device identity is really important. And then also imagine if you build your solution using Event Hub, your IoT solution using Event Hub, and then you wanted to scale out um, and then realize that you would have to rewrite your solution to use IoT Hub uh, uh, if you wanted those additional features. So something to think about, uh, I always mention this to architects and, and developers, uh, just just saves you a lot of cycles down the road uh, and when you're developing and really thinking about your IoT solution. And we do have a, a page on Azure that deep dives into comparing it even more if you have additional questions. All right, so let's go ahead and look into the core platform capabilities of IoT Hub itself. Um, one of the first things is being able to send telemetry um, from devices. I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons why people use IoT Hub, just be able to send that telemetry. And then also being able to send commands down, um, uh, messaging back to devices. Um, and the third thing is device and module twin. Really, this is the state document exchange. And what that really means is that um, every IO, when you make an IoT hub, um, IoT hub actually maintains a device twin for each device that you're connecting to IoT hub. Um, and device twins really are JSON documents that store things like uh, your metadata, your configurations, your conditions. Um, and so that is a really handy uh, thing to have. And, and there's other slide that we'll go into and talk about uh, device twin, but just know all of your devices, each one has a device twin for that. Um, the next thing is, the next capability I'll talk about is direct methods. Uh, direct methods, uh, so IoT Hub gives you this ability to invoke these direct methods on the on devices from the cloud. And so direct methods represents a request reply interaction uh, with a device. It's kind of similar to a HTTP call um, in the way that they succeed or fail immediately um, after, after you do some input of timeout. Um, they're great uh, for scenarios where you need something, uh, you need an action right away. Um, they're normally used to turn on features or, you know, a device on and off or, you know, set a specific setting for the device. 
The next thing is file upload. Uh, this is actually the storage is blob based. Um, and so I really recommend using the file upload if you're sending media files or these large telemetry batches uh, that you're you're collecting from these devices or a, or you have compressed uh, to save bandwidth. So we do have that feature and it's really handy to be able to do that. Um, another thing about IoT Hub, it does have built in routing. So if you, for example, wanted your messages just to go to like Azure Blob Storage or maybe even Azure Data Lakes uh, uh, Storage Gen 2, uh, you're able to do that. Um, you're also able to set those endpoints um, where it can be a vet hub as well. Uh, so that's really handy. Uh, and then we do have a new feature, a new capability in the platform, which is called Device Stream. This is a public preview. Um, it's stream based, it's not message based. Uh, and so we could go through that in a, in a moment. Um, and then what I mentioned before, we do have different uh, client SDKs. We have our device SDKs. We even have uh, SDKs to support uh, the device provisioning service and then uh, open clients as well. So I just mentioned device streams. This is in preview right now. You can actually get access to this and test this out. But really what this is, uh, is to uh, be able to facilitate the creation of a secure bi-directional TCP uh, tunnel for um, cloud to device communication scenarios. Uh, so this, device stream is meditated by IoT Hub streaming input, which acts like a proxy between your device and service in, uh, endpoints, such as, uh, so if you have IoT Hub device streams, uh, they're great for addressing if you, you know, need your IoT devices, um, you need to reach those um, in a firewall friendly manner uh, and without being able, uh, without the need to broadly open incoming or outgoing network firewall po uh, ports. Uh, so this is really important, uh, especially for folks who want to make sure that when they do have those uh, firewalls that, you know, they're, they don't have to do the, they can do that securely. Well, I'm going to kind of deep dive into that. So again, for uh, if you have a firewall, it's firewall friendly and, and connectivity, no need to open the inbound ports um, on the device or its network. You, only um, outbound port is uh, 443 is used. Uh, authentication is in force. Again, security is really important. So this is both on the device and service authentication using the IoT Hub credentials and then encryption enforcement. So the traffic is sent over the device stream and it's always encrypted using TLS. Uh, so that's an important thing to note. Um, and then it's compatible with TCP and IP stack. So you're able to integrate it with your, let's say you have a particular device application or off the shelf, TCP IP um, application you're already using, uh, well, device streams, you'll be able to use that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about IoT Hub device management. Um, whenever talking about device management, always kind of think of it as five stages. Um, and so let's go through uh, the device twin, and then talk about how that goes into, you know, the the five life cycles of a, a device like, or five stages of a device life cycle. Um, and those stages are plan, provision, configure, monitor, and retire. So let's deep dive into what is a device twin. Uh, so I mentioned before device twins are JSON documents to store device state information. So you can have configurations, your condition of your device, metadata, um, and it, you know, every IoT hub has for each device a device twin. So there's different elements uh, in the device twin uh, to think about. 
Oh, went too went too fast there. Um, so there are uh, tags, and tags are really set by the service. It is not viewable by the device. Then you have desired properties. This is set by the service um, and delivered to the device. And then you have reported properties, which is set by the device and delivered uh, to the service. Let's see if I can get this animation going. Um, so why I'm bringing this all up is that uh, there is those different elements of device twin to think about um, that is helpful in a device life cycle. So going back to the desired property, um, so desired property to set that back in application and read by device. Uh, so a good example of that would, would be if you um, needed to set a desired property um, by the device and it needed to be read by the backend application. Um, and tags are great for being able to, you know, uh, query and do law uh, and set tags for each one of those, uh, th those devices. Um, so let me just go through the five stages and how, how that interacts with this, this device management. So plan is the first stage. Um, and really what this is, is, uh, enabling folks like you to create a device metadata um, that enables you to easily um, and accurately cre uh, query for um, and target a group of devices for bulk management operations. So you can use that device twin to store this metadata um, in the form of tags and properties. Um, so again, what I mentioned before, using tags to be able to easily query, that's part of the plan stage. The next stage is provisioning um, of your device. So you need, want to be able to securely provision devices to IoT Hub, um, and that way it makes it easy for um, operators to discover device capabilities um, and, and be able to find them quickly. Um, and it also uses the IoT identity registry to create flexible device identities and credentials and then perform operation in bulk using a job. Um, so when you build devices to report your capabilities and condition, you can do that through the device properties within the device twin. Uh, the next stage is configure. Uh, so configure is all about uh, facilitating a bulk configuration changes and firmware updates to device. Um, and one way you can do that is um, by performing these device management operations. You can do that by using those desired properties or with direct methods and broadcasting jobs. So it goes back to um, understanding uh, the desired properties. And then the next stage is monitor. Uh, so monitoring, uh, you want to be able to monitor that device. You want to be able to know that it's still there, that you know, you're connected uh, collecting the health of that device that is doing what it's supposed to do. And then if it's not doing what it's supposed to do, you need to be able to alert uh, operators to issues uh, that requires their attention. And so you can actually apply that device twin to allow devices to report real time operation conditions and status of the update operations. Um, and you can do that by using device twin queries. Um, and then the last thing for device lifecycle um, is retirement. So if you need to replace or decommission devices, let's say after a failure, or maybe you maybe it's not even a failure. Maybe you your company has decided that you want a new device or a new version of that device. Uh, you can actually, you know, it's kind of part of that upgrade cycle. Um, and so you can easily replace those devices even in that retirement stage. But you can use the device twin to manage the device info of the physical device that's being replaced or archive it if it's being completely retired. Um, and you can use the IoT Hub identity registry to securely revoke, would say, any device identities or credentials. So those are the benefits of device twin in a five stage device life cycle. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about protocols. 
Um, and I really want to kind of deep dive into when is what protocol is good for different scenarios um, and different types of devices. Uh, but IoT Hub, we do support uh, AMQP, MQTT, and HTTP. Uh, those are the main ones that we support. Um, it's all about maintaining that persistent connection to IoT Hub. Um, all connections are uh, TOS enabled and the devices are authenticated. Um, devices have an IoT Hub identity, uh, so this can be either through a SAS token or X509 certificate. Um, we also allow special purpose service identity with higher pr privileges. Uh, so I have this table uh, for you guys to view on which one of those features uh, and protocols are supported with those features, both on the device side and service side. Uh, so normally uh, when recommending MQTT or I would say MQTT over WebSockets, I normally recommend that um, uh, you know, if you're if you're using use that on devices that don't require multiple devices over the same TLS uh, connection. Uh, so that's that's when I would go and recommend for MQTT. Um, and there's there's also also another other reason you might want to go with that as well uh, that I'll get to into a moment. Um, when you when you want to use AMQP uh, or would say AMQP over WebSockets, WebSockets. Um, this is great when you're using field or cloud gateways because um, you can really take advantage of connection of multiplexing across devices. Um, when you think of MQTT and HTTP, um, those normally support a uh, only a single device identity. Uh, so that means the device ID plus credentials per, uh, you know, for the for each of the TLS connection. Um, and so if you're working with gateway devices or anything like that, I really recommend looking into AMQP. Um, and then HTTP or HTTP um, is great for, let's say, uh, devices that can't support any other protocol. Um, or, you know, a really play, uh, other place that it shines um, is low resource devices. Um, and, you know, so if you look at the MQTP or MQTT and HTTP um, S libraries, they all have a smaller footprint compared to the AMQP uh, libraries. Uh, so if you if you have a device that is extremely limited, uh, those protocols, the HTTP and MQTT, based on the size of the libraries, um, since it has a smaller footprint, it's really good for the low resource devices. Uh, so those are a, a couple things to think about uh, for which protocol for you to choose. All right, so there's different ways uh, to think about connectivity to IoT Hub. Um, and this, this is your device to IoT Hub. Um, and so I'm going to go over uh, the different types of connectivity to think about. Um, one is devices that have IP version 4 um, and connect to IoT Hub directly. Uh, these devices talk to our supported protocols. You can go ahead and connect these devices directly to IoT Hub. Um, example that we're giving here is really uh, city street lights. You know, they, they got everything that they need to connect to IoT Hub and, and they're good to go. Um, and then there's, there's devices out there that can't easily connect to IoT Hub. Um, and so the next model is really indirect through a field gateway. So devices don't know any of our supported gateways. Think of like Bluetooth, um, NFC, uh, think of like, you know, like little wearable devices with, uh, as I mentioned, Bluetooth modules, that they're, they're not gonna be able to connect to uh, IoT Hub directly. Um, and so for them, uh, it's best to bring in a field gateway. Uh, these field gateways uh, already have support for our protocols. Uh, so an example would be soy moisture sensor on a farm. If you have a bunch of these sensors, you know, all over the place, uh, and you can connect those, would say, to a gateway device, and the gateway device 
then can talk to IoT Hub and do that translation. Um, and the next one to think about is direct from a private network. So these devices have a private IP. Uh, the device's traffic passes through, you know, your network gateway. Um, and a great example of this would be uh, robots in a factory floor. Uh, so they already have the gateway that they want to connect to with IoT Hub um, through that private IP. Um, another one, not to be confused with the field gateway, the protocol gateway connects devices through a protocol gateway. Um, and what this means is that the protocol gateway connects IoT Hub on behalf of the devices, but with their identity. That is the key element here, uh, how the protocol gateway is different from the field gateway, uh, because you actually keep the identity of those devices um, and those go up to the hub, uh, but you still have some sort of gateway device in the middle. Um, unlike the field gateway where really um, you, uh, none of those, the devices don't have any of the supported protocols um, and you know it's really just going through that field gateway. The last, Last one is Edge. So if you're working with our IoT Edge runtime, um, we do have a model for this, the connectivity with IoT Hub. Uh, so it's a special purpose protocol gateway, IoT Edge runtime deploys and manages device code. Um, and this usually involves high power devices. Um, so imagine you, know, you have a device that is on the manufacturing floor and has a bunch of cameras doing object detention or object uh, detection on a conveyor belt. Uh, so that device, that gateway device is running IoT Edge, which then is connecting to IoT Hub. Um, and IoT Edge actually has multiple ways uh, and uh, uh, types of ways that uh, it shares that information from devices to IoT Hub, uh, meaning that you could have, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, use a gateway device where you have a bunch of devices connected um, and it can act like a field gateway device using IoT Hub runtime, um, I'm sorry, IoT Edge runtime. Um, you can also have kind of the protocol gateway device scenario where you have all these devices connected uh, to the gateway with that's running IoT Edge. Um, and that ga gateway that's running IoT Edge still holds the device identity. So when you look at IoT Hub, like let's say you're going in the, uh, the Azure portal and you're looking into IoT Hub, you will actually see all those devices individually. Um, and so it's keeping its own identity. Uh, and if you join in the IoT Edge rundown, I'll talk about those different um, uh, different types of gateway types with uh, IoT Edge if you, if you end up using that runtime. So those are the, the core features of connectivity models for IoT Hub and things to think about. The next thing uh, that I like to talk about is message enrichment. So we talked about how you can, uh, the IoT Hub has built in routing. Um, you can route it to, you know, uh, storage bob and um, other endpoints, but there's a, other thing that you can do as well, um, and this is this is kind of a relatively newer feature, but uh, message enrichment, uh, what it does, it it really describes the ability uh, of IoT Hub to stamp messages with additional information before those messages are sent to another endpoint. So, for example, if you have messages coming here through IoT Hub, you can you know that message routing can go to these different places but let's say you actually want it to be able to stamp those messages with let's say a device twin tags property or iot hub name static str uh, string um those particular uh, uh information you wanted to add you can do that and so by the time it gets to that particular endpoint uh, you can have the message enrich. So this is this is definitely really useful if, let's say, you uh, just want to have that extra um, uh, ability to stamp messages for a certain endpoint. And what's also useful is that, let's say, you have 
many endpoints and you only want one of your endpoints to have message enrichment, you can do that as well. And we support um, up to 10 message enrichments uh, per IoT Hub. Uh, so uh, that's definitely super useful, especially if you kind of want to filter things out. All right, uh, other uh, thing with IoT Hub is that we do have integration with um, Azure Event Grid. Uh, so you can send uh, event notifications to other services. You can also trigger downstream processes. Uh, for example, this one's a popular one where let's say um, we've created a new device um, in IoT Hub and we wanted to send an email out to uh, an, the operator to say, hey, a new new uh, device is um, now on the IoT Hub. And so you can easily do that by creating an IoT, um, by, uh, by the IoT Hub uh, event grid integration. Uh, and you could do that by uh, creating a logic app. And the logic app is set up uh, for a certain event. Um, and this case uh, for this example is if you created a new device. Um, and we actually have multiple events supported, device telemetry, device creation, deletion, device connectivity, uh, if a device gets disconnected. But going back to the initial example, you create a logic apps, the logic apps you have, um, you set it as action to be a uh, send an email. So it can be Outlook, it can be Gmail. You could even send, you know, a, a tweet out. It's there's tons like the possibilities are pretty endless on the business integration you can do. Um, and then you'll set up an IoT Hub event subscription. Um, and then you would be able to easily uh, when the device is created, you can send an email um, out to wherever you said it to go and you could even uh, uh, due to logic apps set you know exactly what you want to share um, who you want to send it to what the body of the email looks like so it's just a nice way of being able to integrate with uh, with your, your business side so business integration all right so let's go ahead and go into our developer tools so we, we have quite a few uh, tooling support for Azure IoT. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people, when we first started off, we, we had a lot of support for Visual Studio Code, um, and then we grew our support for Visual Studio. So let's say you have Visual Studio now, you're, uh, you're getting that same level of support uh, that we have with Visual Studio Code as well, which is really nice. And this also includes um, IoT Edge as well. So, uh, so you can see with Visual Studio, we have IoT Hub support, we have IoT Edge support, uh, we have Azure Sphere tools for Visual Studio. So if you're working with Azure Sphere, you can easily, uh, easily work with uh, Visual Studio and have amazing support there. Um, and then Visual Studio Code, we have a, a couple extra extensions for Visual Studio Code, which when we go into there, I'll, I'll, I'll showcase. But the first one is Azure IoT Tools. Um, really what this is, is um, an extension pack. Uh, so that extension pack includes IoT Hub Toolkit, um, how to get started with IoT Edge, that, that extension support for that. Azure IoT Device Workbench, uh, which I'll go into in a moment. And then uh, for, for the makers out there, Arduino, we have Arduino support as well. Um, and then some other tooling support, we have Azure, uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, so we do have support for IoT Edge Task for Azure Pipelines, Jenkins support, um, and so if you're if you're already using Azure DevOps um, or want to use Azure DevOps, uh, Azure IoT we do support Azure DevOps, and we have uh, documentation on how to get started there. Um, the other thing is if you you know, uh, prefer using the command line. We do have an extension, what, or we do have, um, you know, an extension that you can be using there that I highly recommend, and we'll we'll go into that in just a moment. Okay, so the ones that we're going to focus on, um, that's focus on IoT Hub. 
really is a VS Code one. Um, you could see there's a lot of things that you can do with uh, with uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, one, creating an IoT hub, um, being able to do the device to the cloud messaging, cloud to device messaging. Um, and then VS Code, the same, you're able to go ahead and um, do a lot of things there and we'll deep dive into that. Like if you wanted to create an IoT hub, you don't have to go to the Azure portal to do all of this. Um, and you'll actually find it quicker, you know, if you did this all through uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, in the portal, you could do a lot in the portal. You can even use the, the Azure Cloud as well. Um, but I highly recommend, you know, if you're if you're wanting to get move quickly and you're already using VS Code or Visual Studio, definitely use these particular tools because they're so handy and it's so quick to get started. And I'll show you in a moment. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, Azure IoT CLI um, extension, which is super useful. Um, I think there's a, uh, I get pinged a lot. There's a lot of people who will who are aware of the Azure CLI, but they're not aware that Azure IoT has its own particular extension. So let's say you're trying to create an IoT hub or anything like that, you'll get an error saying that you can't do it. Um, and that's because you have to install the extension. So there is one particularly for Azure IoT services like IoT Hub. And then uh, one of the extensions that we'll go into is that Azure IoT device workbench. Uh, and so uh, let me go ahead and just jump in there on my VS Code and show you these extensions. So it's really easy to find them. So if you're in VS Code, um, and if this is your first time seeing VS Code, I highly recommend uh, downloading it right away. You can have it on your Mac, Linux, you, it's uh, Windows, uh, so it's super portable. It's 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 such a great IDE to work with. Um, and so uh, going back to that extension pack, this is what I was talking about uh, two seconds ago with Azure IoT tools. Just Download the extension pack. That should really be one of the first steps that you do instead of uh, downloading the, the individual extensions. Just download the extension pack because you'll get IoT Hub. You will get your extra support uh, for IoT Edge, um, meaning that you can create modules. It's easy to create a manifest, all of that type of stuff. Uh, we'll deep dive into that in the IoT Edge workshop. Um, and then I just wanted to click and talk a little bit more about this device workbench. Um, what this is, is Azure IoT, we, we really wanted to make it easy to connect to certain devices. Um, so you can develop and debug for what say the certified IoT Edge devices. Um, if you haven't seen our device catalog yet, let's see if I have it up. If you're trying to find a device, I think I probably get asked every other day uh, what device to use in an IoT solution um, because it can be it could be a little overwhelming to find what is the right device um, to use for your particular one because there's as mentioned before there are so many devices a million devices per hour that's that's being connected um, and so you have a lot of options uh, so I always recommend people if you're looking for a device uh, check out the starter kits, check out the certified devices. These are with our partners. Um, you know, there's documentation with them. They've been certified that they actually work with IoT Hub. Um, and then we also have like ones that are certified with Edge, that's certified with IoT plug and play. Um, and then if you're looking for things like different protocols like OCP UA, you know, if you're working with industrial um, IoT solutions, you know, you can you can filter based on that as well. Um, one thing I want to call out though is that this is not the extent. This is this is a small set <laughs> of devices, um, and so if let's say you're working on a device, um, and you looked it up on this catalog and it's not there. Don't worry, it doesn't mean your device is not uh, supported. Again, we have open source uh, SDKs um, and these are the ones that just been certified through partners um, and have extra documentation. 
Uh, and so you, if you have worked with the MX chip before, um, it's one of our dev kits. Um, this workbench works amazing with the uh, MX chip dev kit. Uh, if you haven't seen it, let me pull it up real quick. Um, it has all of the you know sensors on there and it's really meant to get start it quickly uh, and connect it to um, Azure IoT Hub. Uh, so this one's a really fun device, especially if you're teaching or you're just wanting to get started or let's say you just want to create, you know, uh, an easy home project. Uh, there's a temperature, I'm, um, um, uh, temperature sensor, humidity, it's got um, uh, buttons on there. Uh, it also has, um, uh, you know, accelerometers. So, um, uh, and a lot of bunch of different things like a screen. So it also has tons of projects. So if you wanted to get started, there's a project catalog as well that you can go to. So I just wanted to spend two seconds on this uh, to talk about the different things um, with this device. If you're just looking for somewhere to get started, um, this is probably the easiest device to get started with. Uh, and also the ESP32, Raspberry Pi, um, also any Arduino compa compatible boards. Um, I like to mention those because, you know, sometimes um, if you're just starting with devices, um, you kind of want to just have kind of a, a, a friendly, friendly device <laughs> to get started with. Um, but just uh, and also the devices like the ESP32 you can go into production with as well. Uh, so this really just makes it easier to do uh, debugging and connect your Azure IoT applications. All right. So first step, definitely install uh, this is the extension pack uh, to get you all ready and set and, and happy. Uh, so really recommend that. Um, and I'm just going to go quickly back to my slide to say, hey, what we're going to do next. So we're going to install those extensions, which uh, you know I just showed you where to install those extension. Then we're going to configure a uh, simulated IoT device. We're going to write it in C Sharp um, and then connect it to IoT Hub. Um, we're going to then run a simulated device to send a device to cloud telemetry messages to IoT Hub. Then we're going to verify that the device telemetry is actually being received by IoT Hub by using the Azure uh, uh, CLI. And so um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump in. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can follow along uh, actually with me now, or you can uh, wait until we're done uh, to, to get started. So let me go ahead and uh, show you which lab that we are going to be going over today. And we really wanted to make sure what we're showing or what I'm showing is that um, a hands-on lab that you can just quickly go to after this event. Uh, and that way, I'm not showing you a bunch of stuff that then if you wanted to get started, you can't find it. Uh, so this is MS Learn. Uh, so uh, Microsoft Learn is all about sandbox environment online learning. Uh, so they're all different tutorials. Um, and I'll have a slide uh, that has a vanity link to this. But if you are wanting to check this out now, the vanity link is aka.ms slash uh, MS Learn IoT. All right, so it takes you to MS Learn. Uh, and so there are different types of ways to learn. So there's modules. Modules are considered individual tutorials. Uh, the sandbox environment um, allows you not to have an Azure description. We're going to be using an Azure description for uh, this particular demo, uh, but you don't have to have an Azure description to go through this hands-on lab. Uh, but I'll, I, I really want to show you on working with the portal and what happens when you have your own description. Um, and then we have uh, learning paths. Learning paths is a collection of modules uh, that just helps you, uh, you know, get started. So if you're wanting to learn just about 
Azure IoT, this is a great intro. If you're wanting to a learning path that has a set of modules on how to securely connect your devices, which we're going to go over uh, today, highly recommend starting here. Um, uh, and the learning paths are really curated to these particular topics. So where we're, which one we're actually going to be doing? We're going to get you started on this remotely monitor and control devices with Azure IoT Hub. So we'll talk we'll talk about you know setting telemetry up and and then monitoring, but afterwards uh, you can deep dive into how to uh, work with um, uh, methods. Uh, uh, and evoke a direct method, and then also uh, work with device twins. Um, and so uh, today we're just going to go over the the right code and uh, send and receive telemetry. But afterwards, you can you can deep dive into those different areas. All right. Since we are working with uh, C Sharp, there's a couple things you need to download. You actually need to um, uh, need to download uh, that uh, the dotnet core um, and so make sure that that is ready to go and download it at this moment um, and if you are following along with the ms learn module uh, we do have support for other languages uh, for that particular learning path uh, so let's say you didn't want to do it in C Sharp, it's okay because we have example in Node.js as well. Um, and so you, you have two options learning um, on that tutorial. Okay, so after you've downloaded this, should be good to go. Um, if you're working with C Sharp, one of the things you're going to want to do is when you're in VS Code, make sure you have that C Sharp extension installed. So I already have this installed, so it's nice and ready to go for me. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it doesn't take very long. I think the, the thing that takes the most time is probably uh, probably actually downloading uh, the .NET Core um, for setup. OK, so after that, we're going to want to make sure that we have an Azure description. Uh, and so I have my Azure portal up and running. Um, I have a demo account. Uh, trying to make sure my screen doesn't keep uh, going black. All right, perfect. Uh, so what we're going to do is you have multiple options to create an IoT hub. Uh, and so you can actually, if you wanted to, you can create it here. And you can add an IoT Hub to your subscription. If you don't have an Azure subscription, you don't have to have it for that, that uh, hands-on learning experience, but we do offer uh, 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 free Azure subscriptions. Um, and so, you know, when you go to the Azure site, you can sign up for free. Uh, and you can also run this, you know, this example that I'm doing right now um, on the free tier as well. So it won't cost you anything. All right, so when creating an IoT Hub, you can do it through the portal. Um, I'm actually not going to create it through the portal, but I just wanted to show you how to create it on the portal if you want to. Uh, we're actually going to do everything through uh, VS Code. Uh, and so uh, uh, when you're creating an IoT Hub, you want to have a different res uh, resource group or say which resource, resource group you want to use. Um, I already set up a resource group called uh, Workshop, um, on the part two of the workshop. You're gonna set up, set up a region, um, and also you're going to want to name your IoT hub here. Um, the next step is you're going to set the size and scale of your IoT hub. Going back to the different price tiers we were talking about earlier, um, you are definitely going to want to go with standard or free uh, for this this uh, tutorial if you're not using the sandbox uh, subscription. And if you end up going free, just keep in mind that this is going to gray out because uh, you won't be able to get more IoT units uh, for the free tier. All right. 
Um, and then you can set any tags that you want there, and then you can review and, and, and get that going. So I want to jump into showcasing the actual extension that we talked about earlier. OK, there you go. So that Azure IoT tools. Um, and it downloads this Azure IoT Hub extension. So when you're actually in VS Code, and you go to your files, here we go. You are able to see that extension information right here. And I am just going to double check that um, cause my screen is kind of going black, so I just want to double check no one else is having seeing that issue. OK, so no one's making a comment about my screen turning black. <laughs> so uh, let me see. Might have to switch screens real quick. Mm, let's see. Hang in there with me. Want to be want to make sure you're able to actually see the screen as well. Hmm. Let's see. All right, let's see. Might have might need to switch monitors shortly and figure out why the screen keeps going black on me, which is not very helpful for for you guys joining in. Let's see. Thanks for your patience uh, while we're trying to figure out this technical issue that we're running into at the moment. Thank you. So we're working on this right now.
Or the tech, the tech folks are working on it right now. <laughs> the support folks. So I really appreciate your your uh, patience. Why we figure this out. Um, the beauty of live. <laughs> so stay with us, um, and we'll get this uh, getting that deep dive into to the code and uh, how to start sending telemetry and working with the extension pack. So Pamela, support should be on soon, I hope. We can see your screen right now. Okay, um, perfect. It might just be blacking out for you, which is still a problem. <laughs> uh, we well, can see things. Okay, perfect. Well, it looks good now. Uh, I just exit out of everything and rejoin. So I think, think things should be, should be good. All right, so awesome. Thank you so much for <laughs> staying on and and uh, let's uh, let's dig into this. All right, so uh, we have about uh, 20 more minutes left. Uh, plenty of time for us to to deep dive into this. Um, so when you install that extension, what ends up happening is you'll see this little area right here, the Azure IoT Hub, um, and you can you know, refresh, uh, and what that's gonna do is showcase your devices in your particular IoT hub that you've done. If you're just starting, you don't have an IoT hub or you probably don't have any devices showing um, because uh, you're not signed in to the Azure Cloud um, um, and selected your subscription. So that's one of the first things you're going to do. Uh, so the great thing about uh, VS Code is you can do pretty much everything um, here. Uh, so if you do, uh, you know, Control Shift P for your command prompt. Um, also, or command palette, um, you can actually type in Azure, sign into Azure Cloud. And what that's going to do is sign you into Azure. Um, and so then you'll enter in your credentials. Um, it, it will literally be two seconds because it just uh, pops up a browser, has you sign in. And then once you sign in, it says, OK, you're good, close, and you can go back to, to VS Code. Uh, so that's one of the first things you're going to want to do uh, uh, before you before you kind of uh, move forward. Uh, you can see the different features with this extension. Um, show the welcome page. Welcome page really is just giving you uh, some links, important links, troubleshooting, how to get started, uh, and what are all the features you can do with this particular extension. Um, and then you could do things as basic as send device to uh, cloud messages to IoT Hub. Uh, you can select your IoT Hub. Uh, you can select uh, your IoT Hub connection string. Um, you can create an IoT Hub. You can create a device. Because um, remember, every time you create an IoT Hub, um, you also need to create a device as well. Because uh, an IoT Hub can have multiple devices. Um, so let me pop up my, my IoT Hub right now. I've created one, but I just want to show you when you're in the portal in the IoT, this particular IoT Hub, um, I already have a device on there. And we're going to see how to create that device, a second device um, in a moment. Uh, but you need to be able to, you know, set an actual device. Uh, so you're going to create that device or you're going to create an IoT Edge device, depending on if you're using the runtime or not. Um, you can even generate SaaS tokens for your IoT Hub, which is really nice. Um, and there's some extra features as well uh, that are in preview, or you can even do a monitoring built-in um, event endpoint, which is also nice as well. Uh, and then if you have other endpoints, um, you are able to see that blob storage, event hubs. Uh, so it's really nice way to quickly get started. Uh, so let's say I just want to create
create a new IoT hub. I can do that through here. It's going to say what description. Um, you're going to use your sandbox description if you're going on MS Learn, or you're going to use that free description you use or the description you already have. So I have a temporary subscription that I just created uh, this morning. Uh, so I can select that one. Um, and what will that do? It will then pop up with name your IoT hub, and it'll go through that stage of what we just went through with the portal. So remember when we were in the portal and I said you can create an IoT hub that way and that you have to select a research group, you can see that, hey, I have a research group or you can create a new one. Um, I can say where I want to create this IoT hub. I can select the standard all right here, which is really nice. Um, and then you provide, provide the name. So I'm just gonna say demo IoT hub um, to, I'm going to name it and then it will tell you um, that uh, what's happening that is creating an IoT hub. And normally when you're creating an IoT hub, it does take a couple of minutes to do that. Um, and so that is one of the reasons why I've already created an IoT hub, even though it's only minutes, but let's we kind of want to uh, move move on the, the demo. So let's create a new device. Uh, so if I wanted to create a new device, I go ahead and create a new device. Let's say, let's call this device O2, and I'm gonna hit enter. And so what it's doing, it's creating that second device for me. And you can see that, oh, it's been created. So let's actually look at what's happening. Uh, and so I'm in the Azure portal. I could have done the stuff in the Azure portal, or I could do everything in VS Code, which uh, if you love VS, VS Code as much as I do, uh, it's just nice to do everything there. Uh, and you can see that device, uh, we've created a new device called device two here, uh, and we can go ahead and get started with it. Um, and one of the things you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and click on that device two. You're gonna see the information, and this is really important information that you're gonna to want to know about this device. It's your device ID, which you set, is your primary key, is your secondary key, is your primary connection string, um, and then your secondary connection string. Um, and then you can enable connection to IoT Hub, or maybe you wanna dis, dis enable it. Uh, so that is an option. Um, as well. So for knowing that I'm going to need my uh, device connection string, I'm going to go ahead and copy it and I'm going to uh, I'm going to save that uh, elsewhere for later. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and make a simulated app. Uh, so we're going to simulate temperature and humidity, and we're gonna write this in C sharp. Um, and so in order to get started, I'm just gonna create a new folder um, and I'm gonna create a new project. So let's call it a uh, workshop um, sim device. So simulated device. Oh, it would <laughs> help if I actually created the, the folder. All right, so we're going to create the folder here. Uh, I'm going to select that folder and I could have done this all through the command line as well. Um, beauty of VS Code, you can have a, a, a terminal set up, uh, which we're going to do right now. So I have this new folder um, and you know, I am going to want to go ahead and uh, create a new, you know, uh, create a new program.cs file for our folder um, along with our project file. So what I'm going to do is .NET um, new console. All right, so you can see that it created these files here, it created our program, it created um, our project file. Um, and so now that you have done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and enter .NET uh, restore. Um, and what this is going to do, 
um, it's going to give me my app access to uh, be able to um, uh, to get the access to the required .NET packages. Um, so uh, right now, I'm going to want to install a couple of required libraries. Um, some libraries I'm going to want to install is .NET uh, package, Microsoft Azure. Ice client library. And we're going to go ahead, let that run. Luckily, it only takes two seconds. Um, we'll go ahead and install this library. I'm going to install the device shared library. Um, and the other library I'm going to install is uh, newtonsolve.json library. And this is really just going to get us everything we need um, all the required libraries for us to be able to make this temporary uh, or this uh, simulated uh, app uh, for temperature and humidity. All right. Now that uh, those are fully installed, we're going to make sure that we're in the right folder. We are so we're in the workshop folder, so we're good to go there. Um, and then you can, we're going to use an example temper, uh, temperature and humidity example code. And we're going to, let's see. Come on. Come on, you can add. This is installed. Good to go. Oh. So I was installing in the wrong place. There we go. Here we go. So in your program.cs file, you're going to copy and paste the example code. Um, we have a lot of samples. So if you are um, wanting to work with you know, simulated data, we have for all of the different programming languages. Um, so you know, Java, Python, C Sharp, if you're working with C, we, we have example code for you to get started, which is really nice um, uh, just to, just so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, we also have um, uh, simulated data apps as well that you can use. All right, so let's let's dig into this. Uh, so really what this is, is our device app. Um, you can see that we have, um, let's dig into this. We can see that we have our global constraints, that uh, we have our temperature, humidity. Um, we have some extra things too, like the, the limit for temperature, um, our desired uh, humidity limit, uh, and then our intervals of uh, uh, milliseconds. Um, and this is how much, how fast the telemetry is being sent to the cloud. Um, and so with any of these example codes, we definitely have a lot of comments so you understand what's going on. Um, this you don't need to dig into right now. Really, this is um, part of this example is showcasing uh, that there is a fan as well. So you have temperature humidity sensor, but you also have a fan that you can turn on and off. Okay, so Anytime you are working with any of the this code, you're going to have uh, your device connection string. So remember how you got your device connection string last time. You can go through the portal and grab it there. Um, and so I've already done that. Uh, so I went to the portal, grab that primary connection string, and now I can enter it into the code. So I'm going to do that right now. Save. It's good to go. We're going to 
we're going to look a little bit more into this code. Um, so really what this is, this code is to simulate the uh, telemetry. So you can see we have temperature, we have humidity, again, the fan, which is that, that big of a deal that we're going to talk about here. Um, but the main thing to get started is your connection string. Um, and then you can see that what we're using is that MQTT protocol. Uh, so you have your device client here. So this code is really important uh, to make sure that you have. And we have a uh, sample code that's uh, a lot uh, uh, shorter and straight to the point, but this one's, this one's pretty good. Um, it gets to the point where you need to have your connection string to get ready. So we should be good there with our example code that we just copied and pasted. Um, and we've added our connection string and really that's it. That, that's all we needed to do here. So what we can do is actually um, run the app. Um, so you can run with, start debugging, you can run with without debugging. So what I'm gonna do is .net run. So what it's saying is um, namespace client doesn't exist. Um, so that is because when I copied and pasted here, required libraries are not there. So let's go ahead and enter the libraries. Um, and since we are running close to time, I'm actually going to open up a new window due to my error earlier. OK, let's see. So again, this is the same code. It's got the connection string. Here, so I'm just gonna do dot net run. And you can see the message data being sent. And so we, when we set the message, um, uh, how, how long it takes uh, for us to send the telemetry up, we set it up. Um, so it, every five seconds, it's sending up telemetry data. And so you can see we have temperature, humidity, um, and when we go to the Azure portal, we're going to confirm that this is actually working. Uh, so we go to overview, and you can see that we are getting telemetry that's being sent up to our IoT Hub. Um, and remember with IoT Hub, you get um, each one, each device gets their own device twin, uh, and that this is successfully uh, has sent up. And normally I would debug the other one, <laughs> but knowing that we only have two minutes left and we had technical issues with the screen earlier, I just wanted to make sure I get you the, the right links and, and good to go. Uh, so really appreciate you guys hanging in there. Um, so I'm excited for uh, everyone on the phone call to be able to go through this. 
uh, tutorial because not only would you be able to send telemetry up and confirm it, you'll be able to actually control the device. So you'll be able to turn on the fan um, with uh, direct methods. You'll also be able to work with device twins. Uh, so it's a really great uh, getting started to tutorial to go through. Uh, so how you get started. Uh, so you're going to want to go to that learning path. Uh, so aka.ms, securely connect devices learning path. I know it's a tongue twister. Um, and then the next one um, that I was showing you earlier uh, on MS Learn, if you were just wanting to get the introduction for Azure IoT, uh, we do have a learning path for that as well. Uh, but the particular one that I recommend going through is actually remote monitoring and control devices with Azure IoT Hub. Um, and if you're really interested in doing more with device management, we do have an automatic uh, device management feature in IoT Hub. Uh, so if you go through this tutorial, uh, which is part of the Securely Connect Devices Learning Path, you'll be able to do that. Um, and then you can also set alerts and metrics. Um, and so, uh, and look through logs that diagnose things um, or with the telemetry coming in. So there's a tutorial that you could do that as well. Um, and so I hope that you'll sign up for the, the future uh, workshops that we're doing. We'll figure out what the technical issues were on this time. So I apologize for that. Um, also, I'm gonna make sure all of you guys or everyone on the, uh, uh, who's joined is going to be able to get this PowerPoint deck. Uh, and so we'll we'll make sure that you get this. Um, and so you'll have slides on how to get started with IoT. We have a developer guide. Again, we have the learning paths. If you're an architect or you're curious about our products and services and which ones are the best to choose, particular on your uh, solution, we do have an architecture guide. Um, and then of course our docs that have I how to guides, reference, and white papers. And then we do have a video uh, a series uh, called IoT Show. Um, it's a new video every Monday, so it's a great way to stay up to date of what we're doing. Um, and then we do have an online form. So, you know, if, uh, if you're trying to find these PowerPoint slides, I'll make sure to post it on this tech community um, when we'll also make sure that uh, we'll, we'll be able to post it through uh, the other channels through this webinar series. So thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna go back to that last slide with those links. I uh, really appreciate you guys hanging in there uh, with uh, that tech issue that we had. So thank you so much. Hope you guys have a great day.